Hey everybody, it's Sean from Chickory's Travels. We just purchased a new Arctic Fox and it came pre-wired for solar. However, when they pre-wire things for solar, at least with this company, they're not um, wiring it for the heavy duty amounts of watts that we plan on putting on. So maybe about 200 watts is all the wiring can handle and we wanted to put on about 760 watts we wanted to have our four Battleborne batteries, we wanted to have our easy start on the AC, and we wanted to use our 3000 watt inverter charger. So incorporating the solar into that, we were going to have to make some modifications. So we finished with the batteries and the solar panels pretty much, we're just cleaning them up. So we wanted to make a short video to show you what modifications we had to make to the pre-wiring or the pre wired solar package for this Arctic Fox 27 5L. So as we go through it, we'll talk through the changes that we had to make. So we're up on the roof now of the Arctic Fox 27 5L and the pre-wiring it came with this um, inlet for the ZAMP solar panels as well as one other one. And these are just single plugs for one panel. So um, that wasn't gonna work for us. So we had to not use these and upgrade to the bigger ZAMP solar combiner boxes. And then another thing with this, when I'll, sh I'll show you uh, when we get down there, is the gauge of the wire was very small and wouldn't be able to handle the amount of watts that we were putting through um, those wires. But then I thought I could use the existing holes to pull the new wire through with a, a heavier gauge wire, but these are um, anchored down pretty well and it I was not able to um, pull any of this wire and routing the wire back through on that same track was uh, not going to happen either because of how well insulated these roofs are and uh, it was just impossible to fit it through all that insulation. So we'll uh, move up forward a little bit and show you what we did. So what we did was we had to drill new holes in the roof and I found that uh, between these two or along the line of these two vent pipes were a um, was an opening that goes all the way down through the RV it's between the bathroom wall and the living room wall so I drilled a one inch hole here and I drilled a one inch hole here um, to mount the combiner boxes and run the heavier gauge wire down directly into the basement bay where I needed to have them placed. And then as you can see, we mounted our four 170 watt panels up here. And I just need to clean up the wiring now, but everything seems to fit fine up here. And they're in good proximity to these combiner boxes. And I also have some more space so I'm going to move the 180 watt panel that came with the RV in the solar ready package um, up closer to the front where I can plug it into here and then I don't have to use the pre-wired plugs at all. Um, I should mention also that um, it was all pre-wired with ZAMP stuff so I chose to just order the upgraded ZAMP wiring and the ZAMP combiner boxes and the ZAMP panels just to make it a little easier. And um, as you'll see when we go down into the basement, I also used a ZAMP solar charge controller to replace the one that was that came in the RV. So now we're underneath in our basement storage area and you can see up here um, behind this wall is the empty space that runs all the way up to the roof. So we were able to run our heavier gauge wires um, from the roof, from this combiner boxes into this uh, 60 amp ZAMP charge controller. And then we were also able to get the uh, positive and negative cables that are running to the battery uh, mounted up here and then run across the top into our battery bay. So it was real easy to, from those holes on the top to just drop the wire wiring down. I cut the old wires and I'll show you what we replaced um, the old solar charge controller area um, because that was only a 10 amp. It obviously wouldn't handle the 
40 uh, something amps that we could get off of the panels we have up. So we replaced it with this, which left a hole up in the main part of the RV in the living room. So we'll show you how we uh, fix that as well. But everything ran perfectly straight down from the roof into this charge controller here. And then we'll go look at the battery bay. So this is where the batteries are usually come in the 27 5L Arctic Fox. Um, as you can see, it's empty. And you can see the, um, the old gauge of wire. What we did, since I have four batteries, we took the two batteries out of here and we're able to run everything through this uh, sheet metal into the underneath storage where the generator would normally go. And we opted to not get a generator. We're gonna use portable generators, um, which we'll talk about in another video. But that space was perfect for placing the four Battleborn batteries um, right next to each other. And then we'll take the uh, sliding panels out of here and turn this into a little storage bay. Um, as you can see here, this is another um, panel plug-in for a ZAMP uh, panel, and this is for a portable panel. So if you wanted to have a portable panel set out to add to your stuff on the roof, you can use this. And um, this is currently not wired in right now. Those are the wires that I just showed you. But um, in the future, if we feel like we need some portable panels, we'll go ahead and add I just wire that up to our existing controller and add uh, portable panels. So this is the underneath storage. Like I said, we placed the four batteries here. All I have to do is uh, build a frame so they don't move around while we're, while we're uh, traveling. And uh, I'll get that finished up. And they're all wired together. Uh, this is the uh, 60 amp fuse for the um, solar panels coming from the charge controller. I also installed a 100 amp uh, circuit breaker here. And these are, this is for the connections into the actual coach for the stuff that runs off of 12 volt. I do have the battery monitor mounted here. Um, don't have it all the way hooked up yet. Um, that's another thing to do on my list. But you get the idea of how we move the batteries from that side compartment over to here and then um, We'll just build a little case for them and we also were able to fit the circuit breaker and the uh, Victron inverter charger is going to mount on this back wall here once we get once we get to that step So that those were the changes we made there now we'll go inside and I'll just show you the last little piece So this is where the original 10 amp uh, pre-wired solar charge controller was mounted and the nice thing about the 60 amp ZAMP solar charge controller is that it comes with a little remote display that you can hook up to the charge controller down in the basement and it had plenty of wire to run it up here and fill that space where that original 60 or where that original 10 amp charge controller was so this uh, mimics the display on the uh, on the charge controller itself and you can scroll through and make any adjustments that you need uh, right from this instead of going down in the basement. So that's pretty much how we did the solar and batteries for the for this new RV of ours. Um, like I said, pre-wired means if you're going to just use a couple hundred watts of solar, um, if you're going to get into more than that, you're going to need a bigger charge controller, heavier gauge wiring and um, make some modifications to what they had put in existing. So I hope you like this uh, short video. Hope it explained things well. Uh, feel free to post any questions down in the comments. If you liked the video, please click the like button. If you didn't like the video, go ahead and click the dislike button. Um, but thanks for watching and safe travels.